Terrence Blanchard, composer for The Five Bloods. Uh, you've worked with Spike Lee for 30 years now. So how did he bring this project to you? Actually, he told me about it right after the Oscar program last year. I mean, you were standing in the aisle and uh, he said, hey man, I'm on a plane tomorrow. You know, I'm going to shoot the next film. And I went, what? Man, why don't, you, why don't you take a break, dude? You know, just sit down and relax. And uh, he said, no, man, I, I got to get it done. And um, I was like, okay. But then when he sent me the video, I was blown away by, by what he had accomplished. Because, you know, to me, Black Klansman was a feat. And I was wondering what he was going to do visually and cinematically. But when he put this thing together, it just took my breath away. So he, he took no break. You guys went straight from Black Klansman and then like all the press from that and Oscars <laughs> into this. Which, which, which really meant that he was working on pre-production right. while all of that was going on. So, Well, do you guys have a, a shorthand now? Like, a, what do you discuss when you start a new project? Like, do you know what he wants? Like, and like, he knows what you're going to do. Like, do you have in-depth discussions about things? The, mo the, the main thing we talk about is how awful the Knicks are. You know, <laughs> for, for well, I'm, I'm in New York, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I literally texted him last night. I said, Man, because you know, the Nets, beat yeah, the Nets yeah. and I, yeah, and I said, Man, I look like you're gonna have to become a Nets fan. And he goes, Never, orange and blue, all, all, <laughs> always. And I'm like, Yeah, okay, we're gonna go uh, down, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, then have fun with that. <laughs> Uh, um, no, but I mean, we do, we do talk about things. We talk about, you know, some things that we haven't done yet in terms of sounds or instruments or colors or things like that. Um, and then, you know, he, he Spike's thing is that he, it's all in how he gets excited. You know, when he brings a project to you, he turns into a little kid, you know, he's like, man, you, you this next one, you know. It's, it's going to be something, man. You're going to have to bring your A game. And he says that with every project, you know. But he's right. I mean, the thing, the, be the beautiful thing about working with him is that, you know, he grows with every project. He's not a stagnant person. He tries to elevate his game with everything that he does, which makes you want to work hard and become better at, at your craft. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the movie is very complex. There's multiple timelines and it deals with really mm -hmm. deep topical themes. And then the music oscillates between hopeful and anguish. Um, and there's some lighter moments in there. So how did you approach all these different aspects? Well, the thing about working on Spike's films is that, you know, A, he wants to have strong melodic content. So that, that's the first priority. You know, you need to have a strong uh, theme. Uh, thematic ideas for all of the characters or situations. So once I start there, then the rest of it is really about orchestration in terms of how to color things for certain emotional situations. So, you know, with this film though, man, I was literally blown away by the opening sequence, uh, the the fight scene, um, what this, we call it, what this mission is about. And um, I took a lot of time in crafting that scene because um, I really wanted to get things right. There was so much going on in that scene. And from Spike's point of view, the way he likes his films scored, it's a challenge because in order to keep melodic content moving for that length of time without it becoming boring or stagnant, there's a lot of things you have to do. And it literally took me five days to write that scene. And I'm generally pretty quick at what I do but I I looked at every detail in that scene and then it took me three days to write it and probably two days to orchestrate it, you know, to make sure that things were, were done in a way that would really help tell the story. But once it was done, then it just kind of set the tone for the rest of the film. Mm -hmm. What were like the components you were refining over those five days? Well, it was, it was really about the, 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 the tonal colors in the orchestra, you know, how to utilize certain combinations of instruments to create to to get certain sounds you know with 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 that battle sequence you know um sometimes using the french horn for the main themes instead of trumpets or some type of woodwind instruments you know um trying to um use certain types of rhythms and 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 drums to to help push along the drama, 
you know, and then using the strings, obviously, at a certain moments to create that emotional tension. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what was the recording process like? You guys used an orchestra, right? Yeah, we were very lucky because, you know, we did this right before the pandemic and uh, we got a chance to get everything in. We, we we recorded in L.A., Sony Studios, and we got a chance to, we had a huge orchestra. I think we had like 96 pieces out there. And Spike is one. He likes to have the entire orchestra there at one time, you know. Uh, and one of the things I think, you know, that makes our working relationship a little different is that he doesn't really want anything other than the thematic material before we score. Um, and I think, and this is just my, just me speculating. I think it's basically because he wants to hear the impact of the orchestration, like the viewer is gonna get it. Because once we finish it, he will sit down and say, okay, you ready? And then we, we actually, <laughs> we make sure that we have two phases is for him with the music and then the dialogue and he'll sit there and listen to every take and make sure that things work for him mm -hmm. so he's very involved in the recording process oh yeah i mean he's there and he's got great ears he, he, he'll never admit that but he has great ears <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget we were, we were scoring one thing man we had the entire string section playing and he goes, hey, man, the viola's out of tune. And I'm like, yeah, they're out of tune. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. How did you pick out the violas in the middle of the entire string section playing? What? What? <laughs> you know? And then uh, he goes, no, no, no. Like, man, okay. All right. Somebody's not telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one of uh, my favorite pieces uh, is the, the cue for... Um, uh, when they find out uh, Martin Luther King Jr. has been assassinated, and it starts mm -hmm. off, you know, really painful, and then, but then it ends with mm -hmm. them putting their fists together, and it's very powerful and inspiring. So, how did you approach uh, that scene? Well, with those scenes, with most of Spike's movies, I, I can't um, divorce myself away from how I would feel if I were in those situations, you know, and I was thinking. You know, being an African American soldier, putting your life on the line um, to 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 fight for other people's freedoms, uh, um, is is an amazing thing to experience in itself. And couple that with getting the news of a person who is fighting for your freedoms and for justice for you to be killed and assassinated in that very country has to be a jarring thing. So I, I just re, I just relied on my own sensibilities and emotions to uh, experience that, you know, and and let that guide me, you know, on the path of creating that scene. Mm -hmm. um, well, the film also features a lot of Marvin Gaye tracks. Uh, so how do you score to complement? Uh, his songs in the movie? Well, the, the, the cool thing is um, that I don't, I didn't have to do much with the Marvin Gaye stuff. You know, uh, that music is so powerful and it's a character unto itself. And the way Spike would use it, he used it a way where we didn't really have much dovetail between the music scenes and the source music, which was really good. Um, so, what I tried to do is to try to be that heroic, majestic voice of these military officers, you know, who went back to find the remains of a fallen brother. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that we treated them with the dignity that deserved, you know, because even though this is a fictional tale, there are a lot of guys who went over there and given their lives for us and never really got the respect that they would do. So, you know, it was my way of kind of uh, paying homage to them and giving them their due. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys have the next one lined up yet? Whenever that could happen? Yeah, actually we do. He's working on a documentary right now. Um, and uh, I'm excited about it. I haven't seen anything, but it's a documentary about 
New York from 9-11 to COVID-19. So it should be very interesting. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. He makes great documentaries. Oh, I love his documentaries. I think he's a brilliant documentarian. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Terrence, it was great speaking with you, but thanks so much for your time. And we'll see you back here in a little bit.